morning boys and girls. My name is Harley from the Emerald Coast Science Center and today we are going to be learning about insect anatomy and how to pin insects. So some of you may not know what pinning insects is. This was something that I learned in college and I loved it so much. So I want to share it with you guys today. So the reason that you pin insects is so that you can um, keep them up in proper preservation and also for viewing. So you'll probably see these a lot of times in museums just to keep records of all the different species that we have on our planet. So I want to show you guys how to do that today as well as talk a little bit about anatomy, not too much, just a little bit. Um, and so that if you are a boy or a girl and you're interested in doing these types of things, then you can just do it at home because it's pretty easy. So let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, we're back here now. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is our insect anatomy. So right here in this picture, I have a grasshopper. So the insect anatomy basically is made up into three parts. So you have this part right here, and that is the head segment. So you have the head segment right here. Then in the middle area right here, it goes from about there to there, you have the thorax. And then from here to here, you have the abdomen. So I just wanted to write these words down so if you guys were interested in drawing out an insect and labeling it, this is something that you can do. Another thing that um, can characterize insects are they have six legs. So a spider is not an insect. It is in fact an arachnid. So that right here is just a little basic of the anatomy. So this will help us out when we go to pin our insects because most of where we will be pinning our insects will be in the thorax region right here. Most of the time we won't be pinning any insects in the abdomen or right in the head. So it'll just be right here in the thorax. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you guys now that we've talked a little bit about the anatomy, hello, um, I want to go over um, different types of curation, which is basically what pinning is. So there is pinning, which looks like this, has needles through it, and then you have vials. So you would have something like this. So you can curate insects in vials. This is ethyl alcohol. So you would fill it up about three fourths. You can't really see it because I'm gonna have to lay it like this. Fill it up about three fourths of the way with ethyl alcohol. And then so it doesn't burst or anything like that, you'll do something called burping. So you will take a needle like so. Stick it in the side. Let's see if I can get this one out. Stick it in the side like that. And then put the cap on. So that way it just burps it a little bit, gets all that extra air out, and then you can eventually pull the needle out. So that is burping. So I wanted to show you guys this vial. Um, a couple of the ones that I already have put in vials because, um, like I said, I did this in college. Um, so this is one, just nothing in it, nice and plain, just ethyl alcohol right here. And then right here I have three different ones in vials. So what you would put in vials, um, you would put all immature insects, so anybody that's not an adult, silverfish, springtails, termites, lice, thrips, fleas, those types of things. So I'm going to show you the ones that I have in here. Let's see. So this one right here is a water beetle. So it's kind of really hard to see just simply because of like the water um, how it magnifies everything but this right here is a water beetle and we're gonna do an we're gonna pin another beetle so not all of them get um, put into vials just some of the just some of them so that is a water beetle we also pin beetles as well and we're gonna do that in a little bit then right here we have a megaloptra so this is a megaloptra um, basically um, this is the larva of it and they live in water so they get really big And then this one right here, I believe this one is a flea. Let's see if we can find them. Oh, we got stuck up there. Oh no. Here, I'll push them down. Okay, now we got them. 
nice and safe. So like I said, again, he's kind of hard to see, but he's in there, just a little guy. So that is a flea. So they would also go in um, vials like this. So two methods of curation, vials with ethyl alcohol so that you can curate them and save them for a long time, and pinning. So now we can go ahead and get into the pinning. So the first one I'm gonna start off with is actually this guy that I collected yesterday. So I'm gonna hold him up so you guys can see him a little bit closer. There we go. Any ideas what this is? This is a click beetle. So I actually got him yesterday. Most of the other ones that I have, I've had before. So this right here is a click beetle. So. I wanted to start off with beetles just in general because um, they are the most abundant insect, um, but I also really, really like beetles. So if you're interested in doing this at home, um, you just need a couple of things. So right here I have a foam board, it's just kind of like squishy so I can stick things into it, but as you can see, I can also stick them like right into this um, table right here. So whatever you can use to kind of like stick things in. Um, you're gonna need skinny needles like this, but you could also use like these ones So the ones you could probably find on your board or anything like that um, You'll need parchment paper as well because we'll use that to spread the butterfly wings or any other winged insect that you want to be that you want to spread out um, You will also need scissors so you can cut that parchment paper and then you will need a uh, Like flat board to spread the wings on which I'll also show you that later so right here with the beetle, like I said, it's a click beetle. So where you are going to pin it is you're going to pin it at the top right part of the hardened winged cover. So you can kind of see his wing right here. So I'm just going to hold on to him kind of soft like this and then just stick it right through. Some of them have harder shells, so you kind of got to really push. I don't know if he's thawed yet. Oh, there we go. And then if you just hold them on the sides, then you can kind of just push it through. You don't want to hold it through the back because um, then you could just accidentally pin yourself. But I had this guy, he was cold earlier, so let's see if I can get it through. There we go. Awesome. So right there, there we have the Coleoptera. So that is the order of insects. So I wanted to mention the orders. Um, I mentioned them earlier and I wanted to go ahead and mention them again. So the order of beetles is called Coleoptera and I wanted to have it written down for you guys just in case you wanted to study that and make it known and I'll do that for each of the orders as well. So right here, beetles, Coleoptera. Hopefully that is the best way to see it. I'll do it both ways. Awesome. Alrighty, so we've got our beetles done. So let's go ahead and go on to our next one. The next one I want to do is something that you guys have probably seen a lot, and that is a housefly. So a lot of them I already have pinned, so I'm just going to kind of point it out to you guys. Um, it's going to be very simple, but I just wanted to show it where it goes. So this is a housefly. You guys can see it right here. This order is called Diptera. Um, these guys are pretty gross. They, um, you guys have probably seen them. They sometimes they like to breed in garbage and manure, um, and they use those little legs that they have right there. It's, oh, it's kind of hard to see. Ugh. Um, there we go. They use their little legs to clean themselves, which is kind of weird. So the way you're going to pin these guys is between the base of the forewings, and it's going to be slightly to the right of the midline. So let's see if I can, you see right here, there's the midline. You can see most of the midline on most of the insects right there, right there in the middle, right to the midline. And then so it's going to be between the base of the forewings. So you can see the wings right there between the base of them and then slightly to the right of that midline. So right there we have Diptera. And whenever you're pinning these, you want to make sure that there's enough room down at the bottom as well as the top so that you can carry them and you can grab them. And then when you want to pin them in place, um, there's enough room where they don't get crushed or anything like that. So 
there is our dip tray. Let me go ahead and write that for you guys so you know it as well. And dip tray goes for houseflies, all those different houseflies, fruit flies, horse flies, all those. There we go. Flies, dip tray. I'll do it both ways again. Awesome. Alrighty, so the next one I want to do is actually something called a true bug. So this one is the most common true bug right here. So this is a leaf-footed bug. Um, true bugs, their order is called Hemiptera. And there are 800 species of them in Florida, so there's actually a ton of them. Um, you can mostly recognize a true bug by its um, triangle markings. Right where that pin is right there, that triangle marking, that's where you're mostly going to, that's how you're going to identify true bugs. They're pretty easy to see by that. So where you would pin these guys is you'd pin them right in the corner of that triangle that's right there. So they actually do have wings though, so you're pinning it right above their wings right into that thorax like I was mentioning earlier right there in that triangle just pit push it right through some of them may seem really hard um, to push through but I promise you it is okay to do that another thing I wanted to point out with this one is that whenever I pinned him and was curating him I actually did break off one of his legs so one of his bigger legs um, if that happens to you and you're interested in trying to fix it you can simply just use Elmer's glue just kind of hold it on there wait for it to dry and then it'll work out just fine so everybody can see that triangle marking and this is called a leaf footed bug because of its back legs like that It kind of looks like a leaf yeah so the other, I actually have two of these true bugs. So this is our true bug right here. And then I actually have another one right here. This is another true bug actually in the family of assassin bugs. Um, but it's called, we call it the wheel bug because can you guess that little wheel that's right there on the top. So they have these little um, mouth parts up here that can um, help them kill other um, insects. But they also, um, are just in the same fam or the order of true bugs because they have that same triangle marking up there. This one is a little bit hidden by his wheel, but you can still kind of see it pretty well. Another thing that I can't believe I forgot to mention was another characteristics of insects, and that is that they have antenna. So they have that head, they have the thorax, the abdomen, six legs, and the antenna. So this is our true bug right here. Let me write that one for you guys too. True bugs can include um, stink bugs as well. Okay. True bugs and Miptera. Awesome. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and go to the next one that I want to show you guys. And that is going to be our grasshopper. So whenever I collected this guy, it was actually a really funny story. I was up at my grandparents' farm and I was helping them mow the grass. And I go through this really big, like five foot high thing of grass and I'm like helping them cut it. And this, these guys start flying out everywhere. So they're really cool because they do have wings. So whenever they spread their wings, they can, they're actually very, very colorful. So this is called a lubber grasshopper. So whenever they were flying like crazy, trying to get out of the way, but most of the time you will see them in high vegetation like that. So they're super duper cool insects. Have those really strong legs right there so that they can hop really far. So um, this order is called Orthoptera. So that would be um, grasshoppers, um, crickets, catedids, those types of things. Those are all gonna be Orthoptera. So where you're going to pin these guys is you're gonna pin them slightly to the right of the midline body. So a lot of these are pretty similar, but some of them are slightly different just because everyone's bodies is a little bit different. So like this one, we pin slightly to the right of the midline as well, but it was on the base of the forewings. Whereas this guy, we're not really gonna be doing that. So let's find the midline. That'll always help you when pinning insects. Find the midline and slightly to the right of it, right there under that little um, line on its body. And just stick it right through. 
Awesome. So that is our grasshopper. I'm gonna keep moving them out of the way so we can have a clear path. So the next one that I want, oh, let me write it down for you guys, orthoptera. Some of these hard words are a little bit hard to spell. So grasshopper. Sorry for my handwriting. So orders is simply just how we classify insects. So you have orders, you have families, you have species that all kind of gets broken down into what specific thing that is. So remember grasshopper orthoptera is grasshoppers, crickets, and also something called a katydid. I do not have one of those, but they are super duper cool insects. There's, they look like kind of like big leaves. So grasshopper, katydid, crickets, orthoptera. Do it both ways again. Awesome. All right, so the next ones that I want to show you guys are um, our odonatas. So that is our dragonflies right here and our damselflies. So it may seem like whenever you see these guys, you think it's a dragonfly. It is in the same order, so it can be easily mistaken, but these are actually called damselflies. So these guys are super duper cool. They have really, really strong flight mechanisms. A lot of um, scientists like to try and um, figure out how they fly so that we can make our um, man-made um, machines fly like they do because it is super duper strong. They also have excellent eyesight per their humongous eyes right there. So those are their eyes right there. They have really, really good eyesight. Um, and where you're going to pin these guys is you're going to pin them between the base of the forewings, slightly to the right of the midline body. So remember, finding that midline is going to help you for the most part. So you can, it's pretty easy to see their wings though, how they're always spread out. Whenever I got this one, I actually got lucky and the wings were already spread out for me. So I didn't have to like push them down with parchment paper, which was really nice. So this is... Um, there's the midline right there. You can kind of see it better up at the top of it. So you can see the midline right there. Another needle. See the midline right there. And then I'm at the base of the four wings. So right here, this is the, these are the four wings right here. These are the hind wings. So you're right at the four wings. So here's the line right here, slightly to the right at the base of the four wings. And just remember, stick it through, hold the body like so, and then just kind of push it all the way through and it'll go all the way in. So something that I have come to find out with my dragonflies though, is their um, tails like to sit down. So if you're trying to fix that problem, um, you can just get two needles like so and do a nice little crisscross action. And that'll support its tail right there so everything is nice and flat and flush um, with however you choose to present it. So that is our dragonfly. And then we have our little damselfly. So they're gonna be about the same. They're just a little bit harder to see, but I wanted to show you guys and talk about the differences between them. So this is our little damselfly. Not in distress, I promise. Oop. There we go. Super cool. So the smaller the insect gets, it's going to be harder to pin them simply just because they are smaller and we have really large hands. So it kind of takes a lot of patience, a lot of calming music. So this is our damselfly. So finding that midline and then pushing it right there through to the right. So let me go find my parchment paper real quick. I had to go grab my parchment paper so that we could do the butterflies. So my butterflies are mostly spread already. So this is parchment paper and I just cut it into little strips like this. So if you're interested in doing any butterflies, this is what you're gonna need. I'm gonna just pull these out because I have a couple. Oh, I found more needles. Oopsies. Just dropped one. Alrighty, so I have two butterflies with me today and I wanted to save these for last. Oops, I forgot to write on here. Dragonfly. Damselfly. Oh, doll. 
nada. So that is for everybody who is interested in those orders and how to spell them because they can get a little weird and also kind of hard to pronounce if you're not super familiar. Awesome. Alrighty, and then like I said, our last one we're going to be doing today is we're gonna be doing our butterflies. So I have two butterflies with me today um, just to kind of show you and I will go ahead and start off with this one. You guys probably know which this what um, one this is. This is a monarch butterfly. So these guys really like to eat milkweed plants. Um, they actually have a, there's another butterfly called the viceroy that mimics these monarchs. Not entirely sure why it decides to mimic the monarchs, but it does. So if you're trying to figure out the difference between if you see a viceroy and you think, oh, maybe that's a monarch, a good way to determine that is viceroys have this black line that goes across their bottom wings. So they all have these little dots around. Theirs, viceroys don't go all the way over like monarchs do but viceroys also have a line right here. So if you ever see that line, that's a viceroy, not a monarch. So monarchs are really cool insects. You can see this backside right here. So I've tried very, very hard to preserve these guys because I just love the way they look. It's awesome. If you look really close though, you can actually kind of see some um, discoloration and rubbing. So whenever you're pinning butterflies, you want to make sure not to touch their wings too much because if you touch their wings too much, then it, all of their like um, powder that's on their wings can kind of come off. So you want to be nice and careful. So you're going to want to get a flat surface for them. I actually have this little wood piece that I made a long time ago. To use for my butterflies to spread them. Um, if you're trying to spread a butterfly, it's best to do it um, right after you've collected it because that way it will, um, goes this way, my head's broken a little bit, but you see how I have a little bit of space in between right here, so that way it'll help me. Um, I can just kind of stick the butterfly body right in between it. I'll find the biggest part right there. Awesome, there we go. So it's nice and flush with it, and then what you'll do to spread it and keep it flat is you will put these parchment papers down like so and pin it in like this. Oops. There we go. So once you have gotten all of these, then um, once you've gotten all the wings down, then um, you'll just want to have it sit for a little bit so that those wings can form and stay nice and flat. Um, but how to get them, you want to spread the wings all the way up until they're like um, nice and about like 90 degrees with each other. So butterflies have this really strong vein up at the top of their wings. So it's best if you hold on to the base like so. And then you can find this wing or the vein right here up at the top and then that's how you can pull it. So I'm going to pull him a little bit closer. Grab that vein and then you can just pull it up more and more and more however you see fit. Once you have it in your place then you'll put that parchment paper down and pin it like so. And then you'll want to leave that. I like to leave mine overnight just to stay safe. So that is our monarch. So I'm gonna go ahead and push him down so he's not too close to the top. Then I wanted to show you guys this guy right here. So this is a zebra longwing. This is actually our state butterfly here in Florida. So these guys are really cool. You'll pin them the same way um, as you do the uh, monarch, as all you do all butterflies and moths actually. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys this one because this one is really cool and it is our state butterfly, so it's really nice to know things like that. So the way you pin these guys is you pin them, besides doing the wing part, um, you pin them between the base of the four wings. Um, so just right there, kind of right in the middle of the base of those four wings. Remember, those four wings are right up there. And then you can, once you have them pinned, you can kind of put them where you need be, and then you can spread them and let them sit. So those are all of the insects we have for today. I'm gonna move this stuff over here and then I will write, <clears throat> write down 
our order for the butterflies. So butterflies and moths are in the same order. So butterflies and moths. Leopard. There we go. Butterflies and moths. Lepidoptera. Awesome. Alrighty, let me take this down. Alrighty, thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you guys learned a lot. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to comment below and I will gladly answer them. If it gets directed to our Facebook, I'll figure it out and I can answer them from you guys. Um, just remember that we are still doing these um, to help benefit you guys. So if you do want to donate, we would really appreciate it. Thank you so much.